Thomas Jefferson once said, Peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. Keep this in mind as we discuss today the executive order that is banning 31 Chinese companies from investing in the U.S. market and how this will impact us in the long run. My name is Dr. David Wallalu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. David, a couple days ago, President Trump and his team put together an executive order saying, here are 31 countries, here are 31 companies from China that no Americans are allowed to invest in because of the ties to the military. What do you make of that? That's correct, Russ. Uh, the executive order was issued a couple of days ago, and basically it's banning uh, U.S. firms from purchasing stocks in those 31 companies, including Huawei, for example, the Sinocom, uh, 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 among others. Those are high multinational corporations in China. And the executive order uh, sort of raised eyebrows. <laughs> uh, eyebrows. Why is that? Is because we never had something like that. Usually, if they are matters of national security, there will be an approach to this one. But to openly ban us from investing in stocks in other companies uh, that's kind of raised some eyebrows there you know you have to ask a whole lot of questions about this starting with the timing well that's correct it's a historical first for us as i said we never had something like that then also the timing uh, uh, what's interesting about this executive order is that it will enter into effect uh, two weeks before president trump leaves the white house and uh, the executive order also requ requiring the U.S. firms that deals with those companies to divest by November 2021. So the timing of it, it's kind of like weird. And uh, there are even some of those who came forward and saying this will even poison the already tense relationship between the U.S. and China. Others have said is the administration, the current one, setting up the next one for failure regarding China relations. So. When we take a look at the incoming president and his views of, of dealing with China, and he seems much more in line with what Thomas Jefferson wrote. Well, that's correct. Again, like we mentioned in, in one, of, one of our uh, shows, that uh, the president-elect, uh, Joe Biden, uh, sees the importance of why there would be a need to renegotiate the trade with China. Well, like we said, you don't want to see the price of commodities going up right. because that's going to create more economic challenges for the country. We're already dealing with the, the pandemic and the economic shutdown and so forth. So, And this is where the concern as to the timing of this. But it is my belief, and again, this is my opinion, that President-elect Joe Biden will overturn this executive order. Well, we're also seeing these particular companies who are recovering from the pandemic. And ch these Chinese companies are recovering faster. So they're actually better investments. Well, that's correct, Russ. And, and, and again, just to, to give our viewers uh, an understanding of, for example, why there is this concern about those 31 companies. And we do have a, a description. We have a link uh, about the 31 uh, uh, companies listed in this executive order and, and there is a link at the bottom of the description so the importance about this these 31 companies majority of them are in the tech sector so why is that because again the executive order uh, indicating that they do have ties to the military well here is the thing that i have a hard time hard time with uh, it's the idea that we do understand that technology you know we're all going to benefit from and any technology that is created, we certainly have a military applications. Clearly. Yeah. We had it here in our system, for example, with the internet. 
Oh, the internet was used first by the military. When the military upgraded its system, it turned the internet into the civilian markets. That's just a normal practice. And my God, has that changed the face of the planet? That's correct. And, and, and what makes this very, some sort of, uh, 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 raised some eyebrows is in a sense that, you know, how come you are not limiting, for example, British companies, German companies, or how about Russian companies, or even Russian companies, Brazilian companies, but you are only targeting the Chinese. And this is where some have argued that there is some sort of a double standards. And it goes back to what we talked about last time. We in the United States are having a hard time accepting that China is now the number one, is economy, not number in one economy in the world. That's basically where the challenge is. And we know that there's going to have to be some accommodation. And doing all these inflammatory things in between that and the end game, which is some accommodation, seems counterproductive. Well, that's correct, because you look at it from two tracks here. One is economic, one is financial. If you look at it from the economic aspect, you know, if we are to shut the doors on those companies here in the U.S., guess what? They're going to go somewhere else. But what's interesting enough is that we do have a return on investments when we invest in the Chinese economy. You know, this is why, for example, you noticed after... Uh, 2018, which is when the trade war started, uh, China's investments in the U.S. went down by about five billion dollars. But U.S. investments in China went up. What was it? 14 percent? Yeah. Some outrageous. 14 billion. You are That's right. 14 billion dollars. You are correct, Russ. It went up by 14 billion. What does it tell you? It tells you right there that we will always be going after the Chinese markets because it, it size. But also, when you think about the uh, economic or labor laws, whatever you want to call them, cheap markets. Yeah. And to think of this, for example, if we are to look at the trade between the United States and China from an economic perspective, since 2012 to 2018, the volume of the trade reached about $635 billion. Uh, by the way, that's a lot of money. It is a <laughs> lot of money. You're absolutely correct, Russ. And this is where... There are those economists who are questioning the, the judgment of the executive branch for it to issue an executive order like this. You think there might be some political play here? I think so. I think so. There is a political motives to this. But again, it's driven by the fact that China now is number one economy. Now, when we ask the question as to which country we import from, what is the country number one that we import from? China. China, as always. Because following 2018, even with the trade tensions, we imported about... $452 billion worth. From, that's correct, from, from China. China. From Mexico, we, invited, we, we imported about $359 billion. And from Canada, about $314 billion. billion dollars, which there's a lot of trade going on with China sitting right at the top. And that's correct. And, and because, again, the sheer size of the market. And that's why, as I will always say, you cannot, you cannot ignore the Chinese market. So, yes, we might not like certain aspects to it, for example, human rights. And, and, and we will tackle that one in one of our shows. We're not saying that the Chinese uh, system is the perfect one. You know, I, I, I read sometimes the comments that some uh, of our viewers put in. We're not advocating for anything. But what we're talking about here is the, is, 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 is what's logical, what what's makes sense from uh, a numbers perspective. That's, that's it. Yeah, and that's, you know, we can't favor one or the other because uh, I don't want to sound negative, whatever. No, 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 we don't care for that. We're presenting the facts so you, the viewer, can decide for your own self. So we're providing you this information, mm -hmm. not because we are advocating for China. You know, I am I'll be the first one to argue for the abuses that China is committing. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the economic picture of where things are going so we can prepare ourselves for that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but if we look at this also from the financial aspects, it was some arguments that uh, 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 some in the financial market are saying, well, wait a minute, if you're going to restrict 
companies from purchasing stocks and securities in those companies, you know, it's not going to make a difference in those companies here in the US, American firms. Why is that? The reason being because those companies portfolio contain about $400 billion. So even if they go ahead and limit the purchase of stocks in those Chinese companies, which will amount to, let's say, 60 billion, 70, I mean, 60 million or rather, $100 million. Inconsequential. Yeah, it's nothing. It's a drop on a bucket. When you have a, a portfolio management that is $400 billion. So it makes me suspect that there's, that there's some play going on for the future of the Trump campaign. Well, there are two things, the way I see it. First of all, I am concerned that if this starts with the stocks, then what will be next? What are you going to be limiting U.S. companies from not doing? That's where my big concern. The second one, this has to do with maybe somebody who's advising President Trump telling him, hey, you need to think in the long term. Long term is six months, eight months, a year from now. If Depending on what the issue of the day is, if, if tension between China, whatever, uh, the former president, by then, President Trump will come and say, see, I was hard on China. But at the same time, who's going to be impacted by all this? Us, the viewers, us, all of us. Because once again, the moment you start seeing prices of commodities going Go up, up, what's going to happen? You start yeah. to see unrest. Oh, even Attention. more unrest than we yeah. have right now. Because we're already dealing with the issues. The difference between us and the Chinese as of today is that they were able to overcome the pandemic, per se. That's why their businesses are picking up. Much more yeah. rapidly yeah. than those in the United States. Yeah. Look no further than what took place in the ASEAN summit, which just concluded a few days ago. Oh, my God. With the signature, uh, with the signing, rather, the signing ceremony of the RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Plan. How many countries were involved in that? Usually, we're 15 of them involved with a, with a $14 trillion economy and 30% of the global population. So, you can just see uh, an executive order that will limit US firms, that means you're limiting the competition. U.S. companies won't be able to compete. On the other hand, we do have it here in our own country. You get uh, defense contractors like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Halliburton. You know, they all are investing in the, plan in the in the public sectors, and we don't seem to have a problem with that. <laughs> so, well, we we have to take a look at how 6G plays into this darn thing. Well, you think oh, again? I'm glad you brought this up, uh, Ross, because that's again part of the big picture. Right. When you take 6G into the equation, when you take the Belt and Road Initiative, initiative into the, the BRI, equation. the infrastructure, the, the digital currency, the digital one, you can just see all how this fit in like a puzzle. Yeah, quite nicely, actually. Yeah. Now, granted, China's going to have any number of issues along the way, but they're in for the long pull. Yeah, and, and they will. As a matter of fact, just yesterday I read some, uh, uh, some reports that they already issued the plan for 2126. Well, this, the reason why that is important because China's plan, the long plan, is that by 2025, they want to be the leading in technology. So what, <laughs> it, what it seems to me is that they are on the right path moving forward till they get to... You know, something we brought up before. Yeah. You take a look at President Xi, or Chairman of the Chinese Communist Party, and what is the number one picture behind him, or the number one theme? The Great Wall. The Great Wall yeah. And what that means is, China's thinking, and we already brought this up once in one of our shows, China's thinking is inspired by the greatness of their history. The biggest single uh, thing ever built by human beings, the Chinese did it. Now we have all of this coming together. Mm -hmm. Clearly the biggest plan ever executed. Exactly. And this is why it is my belief that most U.S. companies will always invest in China's market because you cannot, you just cannot ignore <clears throat> the sheer size of that, of that economy because it's a big market. You, you just cannot ignore it. So if you are uh, a CEO of a company, you're going to be thinking about the bottom line. And what is the bottom line Can for they, any business? And that is their duty. Yeah. That's why they were hired. The bottom line. 
Yeah, and the bottom line is the profit. That's that's the nor that's the name of the game, and we shouldn't be some sort of uh, uh, sugar coating uh, that because it's reality. So, so this is where we see this stuff going, and that's why it is my belief that they will overturn the uh, the next administration will overturn this executive order. It almost seems like it's a futile attempt when we look just at the surface of it. But always keep in mind there might be another game going on here. That's correct. And there is a possibility. And one of the things we always emphasize is stay informed. I mean, so much so much distraction goes on, and it's so hard to find out what the truth is. Uh, well, that's why we're hoping in our shows we provide our viewers with, with the facts, at least some up-to-date information. Like we always say, it's up to them to decide. It's up to you the viewer to decide what's, what to accept, what to reject, and, and, and everybody should reach his or her own conclusions based on whatever he or she believes in. Our job and our duty is nothing but to provide accurate information and it's up to them to decide. So, let us know your thoughts in the comment section, which by the way, I appreciate uh, all the comments and we respond to them. Uh, and also be sure to check out our other videos and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and as always stay informed.